welcome to my class again today uh, i'm going to teach you the different types of commodities or different types of goods uh, that has been classified in economics so first in types of goods i'll start with uh, necessary goods comfort goods and luxury goods and necessary goods are basic necessities of life without these commodities we cannot survive example of necessary goods are food water electricity etc we cannot survive without food so this is necessary good water we, are, we must have water electricity we must have uh, we also should have a uh, housing facility or uh, gas cylinder all these are necessary goods then next category is <coughs> comfort goods this category goods are not necessary of life comfort goods without them also we can survive but it makes our life better so the comfort goods it gives pleasure and makes life better for example uh, leaves we can uh, climb up the uh, stairs also but instead of that we are using leaves so this is giving us comfort i can say water pump in india we uh, take out water from the well so instead of pulling the water by rope and the bucket we can use more uh, pumps again uh, mixer grinder so that also give us comfort because instead of uh, uh, making paste of them we can use a mixer grinder to make uh, spices and all this uh, and many other uses are also there for mixer grinder and it, it makes our life easier next category of commodity is luxury good luxury goods are these are not necessary but it increases our social status luxury goods uh, is not necessary for our life it is but it gives us a special satisfaction here another thing we have to be mentioned is that when our income increases necessary goods consumption remains almost same with increase in income we purchase more comfort goods and this one this is so here we have comfort goods income increases so demand will also increase so we can say positive income elasticity is there luxury goods we can say income elasticity of demand is greater than one e y is greater than one means income elasticity of demand for luxury good is greater than one that means when our income will increase demand for luxury goods will increase more than proportionately that means if income increases by 10% demand for luxury goods will increase by more than 10% so in this way we can classify the commodities into necessary goods comfort and luxury goods next category of goods are we can classify the goods into three more categories that is normal goods inferior goods and defend goods normal goods are uh, general goods which are uh, generally we use in our day to day life and how can we classify them the easiest way to classify a normal good is income when income increases demand for those goods will also increase any commodity you just take uh, think of any commodity in your life and you see you, uh, if the demand for that commodity increases when your income increases with increase income if you purchase more of that commodity that one will be normal good it can be any commodity in our day to day life the next category of commodity is inferior goods inferior goods can be defined uh, like that the commodities demand for which will decrease with falling income for example uh, think about this uh, this t-shirt so when i was unemployed i was using ordinary t-shirt and when i am employed i am using branded t-shirt so we are using better quality items so and another thing that you have to keep in mind that no commodities are inferior no commodities are superior what is inferior to me it may be superior to somebody else and what is superior to me it may be inferior to someone else next you will see given goods given goods are the extremely inferior goods this uh, commodity this the term given goods was used by uh, sir robert given sir robert given 
uh, introduced this term in economics, Giffen goods. During his research, he found that there are some extremely inferior goods, the demand for which will fall if their price falls. Generally, the law of demand states that when our uh, uh, when price falls, demand for the commodity should increase. The law of demand says that there is inverse relation between price and quantity demand. That is, if price falls, demand rise, and if price rise, demand fall. But here, Sir Robert Giffen, a Scottish statistician and economist, in his research he found that demand for those commodities will decrease when their price will fall. So he, is, he has got a positive price elasticity of demand. Generally, price elasticity of demand is negative. But according to uh, his research, he found that there are some extremely inferior goods, the demand for which will fall when their price will fall. So there is, uh, he has given the example of bread. Now I can give example in our town that there is one haunted house in the area. So people are not staying in that house. The house owner is lowering the rent and when he is lowering the rent, the people are uh, thinking that why he is lowering the rent because it is a haunted house. So demand is also going down. So to lower the price, lower will be the demand. Uh, goods may also be classified into substitute goods and complementary goods. The definition is very easy. First I will explain substitute goods. Substitute goods are those goods which can be used in place of each other with same comfort. The example of substitute goods are tea and coffee. We can uh, give example of substitute goods like uh, samosa and uh, kachori. We can give example of uh, substitute goods like uh, Pepsi and Coca-Cola or Reynolds pen or Mitsubishi pen. So these are substitute goods or uh, hero bike or Honda bike. So all these are substitutes of each other. We can use them with same comfort. Next category of commodities are complementary goods. Complementary goods are those goods which must be used jointly. We cannot use the commodity separately. Both the goods must be used together. These are complementary goods. An example is car and petrol or uh, you can say car and diesel, whichever is applicable. So we cannot use the car without petrol we, or we cannot use the petrol without a car or a bike or scooty or scooty or petrol or whatever we are using there. The commodities are of two types, the substitute goods and complementary goods. I call them complementary goods are made for each other. That means they must be used together. They are always together. And uh, this one, substitute goods, matter uh, adushman. That is if tea comes, coffee cannot come or if coffee is ordered, tea will not be ordered. So they are rival, having rivalry between them and these are having friend friendly relation between them. Both of them are coming together, appearing together. We demand both of them together but here when we demand tea, we don't demand coffee and if we demand coffee, we do not demand for tea. So this is the classification of two more types of goods that is uh, substitute goods and Complementary goods. There may be another classification of goods that is intermediate goods and final goods. Final goods are those commodities that has come out of production boundary. That means their production process is 100% complete. Production is done and now they are ready, for you, ready to use for consumption or for investment. And uh, intermediate goods on the other hand, they are yet to come out of the production boundary. Intermediate goods their production process is not completed. Suppose production process is completed by 50% or 70%. Even if it is by 90% also, then it is not final good. It will remain as intermediate good. That is, it has not come out of production boundary. Production boundary is an imaginary line uh, that, say, that shows whether the commodity has, its production has completed or not. The production process is completed or not. If the production process is still going on, it is intermediate good. And once it has become, the production process is completed, it will become final good. Here, another, uh, there, you see, uh, difference between this final, uh, final good and intermediate good. Another one is, uh, no value addition is needed. 
and here intermediate good value addition can be done. Now first definition, this is the definition actually meaning of final good and intermediate good. When you will be asked what is the meaning of final good, you will write that final good has come out of production boundary. Those commodities that has come out of production boundary are called final goods and the commodities that are yet to come out of production boundary are intermediate goods. That is the definition. Now the difference, you will write the meaning, in difference you will write the meaning also and in addition you have to write in final goods, no value addition is required or needed. That value addition means uh, to add values in them. So, uh, for example, we have purchased sugar cane of rupees uh, 1 lakh rupees and converted it into sugar and sold them at 5, 5 lakh rupees. So, value addition of 4 lakh rupees is there. So, like that, if final good is there, no more value addition is required. On the other hand, intermediate goods, these are value addition is required. For example, just now I have said that uh, I have purchased sugar cane of 1 lakh rupees, converted them into sugar and sold it in the market at rupees 5 lakh. So, I have made a value addition of 4 lakh rupees because I my intermediate cost was 1 lakh rupees and my the value of my final good is 5 lakhs. So, the difference is of 4 lakhs. So, I have added a value of 4 lakh rupees. So, in final good, no value addition is required and in intermediate goods, value addition can be done. And another last one is, in calculation of national income, only the final goods are included. So it is included in national income. Only final goods are included in national income and intermediate goods are not included in national income. If we include intermediate goods in national income, then we will commit the mistake of double counting. There is another category of goods that is uh, consumer goods and capital goods. So first I will explain what is uh, uh, consumer goods. So consumer goods are either purchased or self produced to satisfy human wants. Consumer goods are we are using it to satisfy our wants. So this is called consumer good. For example I have given uh, food items, chocolates, biscuits, ice creams all these are consumer goods because we are producing, uh, we are purchasing it from the market and we are using it for our own satisfaction. So this is consumer good. On the other hand, capital goods are, it can be defined as produce means of production. In simple words, capital goods refer to those goods, those man-made goods which are being used for further production. Then it becomes capital goods. The example of capital goods are machines, tools, etc. And all capital goods must be man-made goods. But doesn't mean all man-made goods are capital goods. But all capital goods must be man-made goods. And capital goods cannot be a natural good. Uh, capital goods can broadly be, uh, can be classified into two categories. There is durable capital goods and single-use capital goods, which are also called raw materials. Now, durable capital goods are those fixed assets used by a farm to produce goods and services. And uh, single-use Capital goods are the raw materials used in uh, production uh, uh, purpose. For example, uh, in a uh, cement factory, the machine which is used for uh, production of cement, the buildings and the infrastructure is coming under durable capital goods and the raw materials, the chemicals and uh, limestone that they are using will come under single use capital good or this is also called raw materials for the factory. Again, uh, if we take the example of sugar factory, the machine will be capital good, the building will be capital good, fixed assets, and the raw materials, that is sugar cane and other required requirements, will be considered as the single use capital good. In simple words, they are called raw materials. Similarly, uh, consumer goods can also be classified into three categories that is, durable consumer goods, semi durable consumer goods, and single use consumer goods. Now, how to classify them? Durable consumer goods can be used repeatedly for longer period of time. Semi-durable capital go uh, consumer goods can be used for a short du shorter duration. We can still use it. And uh, single-use consumer goods can be used only once. In terms of duration, we can say that the commodities which can be used for more than one year are durable consumer goods. And the commodities which can be used for less than one year will be considered as semi-durable consumer goods. This one, this is a marker pen, this is also coming under semi-durable consumer goods. 
Then single use consumer goods. This is the food item that we are consuming every day. Food items, chocolates, etc. All these are we cannot consume more than once. Once we have consumed it, it's finished. Same commodity we cannot consume twice. Now we will get two more categories of goods. That is uh, public goods and private goods. How can we classify public goods and private goods? As the name indicates, public goods are uh, supplied by public authorities. That is government. And public goods are generally see public goods are generally provided by the government. And how can we understand something is public goods? Generally, we are getting these goods free of cost, generally. And these two principles are applicable, non-rivalry and non-excludability. These two principles are applicable for public goods. So, non-rivalry means when the commodities are supplied and there are so many consumers, but none of the consumers are rivals of each other. Example, the road that we are using and the street light that we are enjoying, this is non rival We are not competing for using the road with each other. And non excludability that means if I am using the service, it does not exclude anyone from or it does not prevent anyone from using that same services. I am also using the road, you are also using the road. I am enjoying the street light, you are also enjoying the street light. I am enjoying the services of defense and police. You are also enjoying the services of defense and police. So this principle that is non-rivalry and non-excludability. That means if I am enjoying this one, I cannot exclude you. Or if you are enjoying that one, you cannot exclude me. On the other hand, private goods here you see, these are generally purchased or self-produced by private entities. Whether it is private individual or private companies or private firms, whoever it may be. Either purchasing or self-producing. Now here, the important thing is that private goods will have to, it's having a price. We'll have to pay a price for that. Now here, rivalry and excludability. Suppose in the market, uh, some special commodities are there, selected items, 10 units are there. So everyone will rush into the market and will try to purchase that one. So the people will reach first. Or who is having more money we will purchase the commodity so the rivals excludability that means if 10 people have already purchased that commodity and i go after those 10 people i cannot purchase so i have been excluded by those people or there is one commodity you have taken it that means i cannot take it so if you take it you have excluded me if i have purchased it i have excluded you so this principle of rivalry and excludability is applicable in case of private goods but in case of public goods, these two principles are not applicable.